Alright. Alright. Um, hello, I'm going to go over the new worst case graph form here that we have for the state of Ohio's weatherization program now. Um, it's a little bit different than what you guys have been used to. This one here, um, if you took the EA or the QCI test and stuff, it's going to look a little bit familiar to you. It's pretty much based off that. So it would just be the one uh, form there that you got to worry about there and stuff. You're going to use this one every day in the field. You're going to do the same thing when you come to EPI. Um, if you look at this form here and everything, like I say, the top of it's going to look real familiar to you. Is that showing up good on that there? We still got our steps A through F there and everything like that. It's down here on this bottom section that's going to change up on you here. And we'll get more into that there and stuff as we run through this test on there. Um, basically, one thing we're going to do here, we're going to get our uh, house set up here and stuff. Even though we're not necessarily worried about our CAS depressurizations and stuff, we're still going to get a baseline reading or our CAS outside reading on this. And basically in doing that there and stuff, I'm going to put the house in winter operating mode. I'm going to make sure all the exterior doors and windows are shut and all the exhaust appliances and busting appliances there are off right now. Um, the house is at rest basically. So I'm just going to walk quick walk through here through the house to make sure everything's shut up. Okay. We do have blower door in here, the cover's on the blower door, that's fine, the way that is there and stuff. All the other windows in here appear to be shut. And nothing's running. So, now we're going to step into our CAS area. And this is even telling me still how to hook up my hose here on this. So if you're using DG700, it's going to be pretty easy. I'm getting a reading of CAS with reference to outside on this. So I'm going to do this, and it's also telling me I want my CAS door shut. So I'm going to shut my CAS door. And now with that, I'm ready to actually get my baseline reading. And I'm looking at my baseline there and stuff, and it is actually a zero on there. Okay. Um, now it's telling me to go in and turn on all the exhaust equipment. This excludes the appliances being tested. So, in our prop house here, we have a few appliances here that we're going to be turning on. One is a bathroom exhaust fan. <clears throat> the other one there is been a clothes dryer. Check to make sure there's nothing in the dryer. The lint filter is clean on that. So we get the maximum amount of air going through that as possible. And then we got our vented rain hood. Turn that up on the high setting. And, and this is currently on plug this time. So let me get this plug back in. Alright. Range hood's on, bathroom exhaust is on, dryer is on. I'm going to come back in here. Now I'm going to shut the CAS door back again. And I'm going to look see what my reading is. And it appears that we've got a negative 0.5. Can't 
So it looks like it actually really jumped up there about a negative point seven. So put that in there. Now look at step B. I am just opening up the CAS door. And with the CAS door open here, looks like we're at a negative 0.9. One. Negative 0.9. Alright. Now I'm going to turn the air handler on on the furnace. Again, you've got a uh, thermostat here. Um, it's got air conditioning set up on it. So it has a fan on switch. And just click that on. Come back here. Get a reading. And it looks like we're at a negative 4.1. So that took a big jump on there. Now we're going to shut the CAS door. And with the CAS door shut, it looks like we're getting a negative 3, 3.1. Bouncing around there. Um, now I'm going to go out and shut the interior doors. Shut that closet door. Shut the bathroom door. And shut this door here. And again, the cast door shut. And I look at my cast reading here. Looks like we're down to about a negative 2.3. Oh, wow, it really dropped there. Hold on a second. Uh, negative 2.3, we'll call it. All right, now I'm going to open the cabin door back up. And with the cabin door, it's a negative 2.7. All right, now I'm going to go back here and look at steps A through F and see which one of these created the most negative pressure in them. And on this particular one here and stuff, it is going to be step C on here. That is our worst case scenario that creates the most negative pressure in the cats. And we got a negative 4.1 on that. So, and that's with my interior doors open, cat door open. So I'm going to go back and open up the interior doors real quick. And air handler's on. kind of verify my reading there. I'm reading about a negative 4.2, pretty close to what we had the first time around on here. Now, this is where this is really going to differ from what you guys have been doing in the field there and stuff. We've got two different sections here, okay, on this. And basically we got one for cold vents. That is for appliances that's not um, in operation at the time, for instance, a furnace in the middle of the summer on this. And then we have one for warm vents and domestic hot water tanks, okay? Um, basically, those are for appliances there where the heat setting is turned on on it, okay? Hot water tank's going to be turned on 24-7, 375 days a year, so you're always going to use this one here for your um, hot water tanks. And basically what that's telling me there, what I want to do is fire my appliance. I'm going to check for spillage at two minutes, 
okay? I'm not required to take a draft reading now with this form, just a spillage test on that. But I also want to measure the CO in this of five minutes in there. And that's coming following the SWS and BTI standards on that. So, first of all, one thing I'm going to do, I'll get my phone out here. Stopwatch started. I'm going to fire my hot water tank up, put it off, and basically I'm wanting to check for spillage in two minutes with that. One thing I like to do is hold my hand up here and stuff. I can feel the moisture and heat and everything coming off. And you can see here all the moisture that's on top of that water tank. Okay? Um, that's spilling right now. Another good sign where you can see these grommets where they've been milled there around the water lines. That this thing has had a spilling issue in the past. So, like I say, I still feel the moisture heat on the back of my hand. I'm not going to worry about using the mirror right now until I get close to two minutes or I quit feeling any um, moisture heat on my hand. So we're coming up right on a minute for this. Still feeling a lot of moisture and heat coming out. Put that in there, you can see where that's folding up. Okay. Uh, still got about 45 seconds left. If you guys remember before we done the spillage there at one minute on the old form, and then we actually took a draft reading at um, two minutes, okay? Again, we don't have to take a draft reading on that. This isn't going to be a requirement. But it's definitely good there for diagnostic there and stuff to let know. So coming right up on two minutes there and this thing still failed. We still had a lot of spillage going on. I'm going to go ahead and leave my timer on on this. Okay. Because the next thing I want to do, especially as the energy auditor or the heat tech or anything, I want to get a CO air free reading. Okay. Um, that's again a requirement there, BPI, that's what's in the NFPA 54 on there. You're still allowed to use the as measure on that. I just recommend for you guys, especially that's coming to take the um, BPI EA field test there and stuff, and kind of get used to that air free measurement. And basically I've already had my analyzer warmed up here and everything. Timer's still running. I want to measure that CO at five minutes. Go ahead and stick my probe in there. I don't want to wait till right at the five minute mark because it's going to take a while for those flue gases to get pulled up through this um, line and everything there and stuff. So, I'm at about the three and a half minute mark. And basically what the CO air free reading is, that's just removing the excess oxygen that's left there in the flue gases after combustion there and stuff. It's a mathematical equation. And most of your analyzers will be able to do that. Your backer racks typically come up here and have a CO with another O in parentheses. That just means it has the oxygen removed out of that CO reading. That's a CO air free reading. Here. 
like I say, if you do plan on using the as measure reading on that, make sure to note that on the worst case draft form as to which measurement you're using that does make a big difference. So. So just about right at the five minute mark, we're coming up on it here and stuff. Um, right there is five minutes. Hit the hold button there. You can look. The CO reading is 26 parts per million air free on that. I can read my stack temperature up here. If I scroll back up on this, and you can adjust the settings on your analyzers as well. You get the study state efficiency, your CO reading, and your oxygen reading. At these low levels here, um, our CO as measured is only 20, okay? Um, but you get down to the CO air free, I went up to 26. And that's kind of typical of what you see. And again, hot water tank, you want to get another reading over here on this. So put it on the other side of the baffle here, and we'll see what we get on it. And I don't have to wait a whole another five minutes on I just kind of want this to kind of level off a little bit because this thing's already been firing there and stuff, so. And I do this side here and stuff, and we can see this comes up here at about 28 parts per million on that. So, CO air free. Now, with that done, I'm going to turn off my water heater. Okay. Now I want to move over to the furnace. Now, again, we're getting into summer here on this. And uh, basically, you know, this furnace is not going to be running in the summer typically. So basically what I'm going to do is go over to the cold vent side of this, where that appliance isn't turned on into the heating side. Um, and basically, I just want to check for spillage at five minutes and then measure my CO level at five minutes. I'm doing everything at five minutes on this. So, I'm going to fire the furnace off. And this thing's going through its purge cycle right now, so I'm going to wait till the burner actually lights off on this and uh, start my stopwatch again there. And being this is commonly vented with the water heater, I can check for spillage in the draft converter or the water heater, okay? Because this is going to be the path of least resistance if this thing's going to backdraft. This is an 80 plus furnace, it has an inducer fan on it those flue gases aren't going to go back through that inducer fan. So, burner just lit off here. Get my analyzer over here. Get kind of ready. And, big thing to note there too, I'm still waiting on the blower to fire off on this furnace. Because when I set that and it started going through its perk cycle there and stuff, the blower actually shut off worst case was with the air handler on so I want to make sure it's fired back off there before I start checking for spillage or anything. Which for the five minute mark and everything it, it definitely will be. The blower just kicked on right there. Um, yeah, five minutes, that, that's a long time. When you're doing your inspection here and stuff, this is something where you'd be doing your temperature rise and everything waiting for that five minute mark. The other thing I want to point out the whole time here, I've had personal CO alarm on me. You know, we had this thing spilling here, just the water heater by itself, with this um, furnace air and stuff running now. I'm not detecting any spillage with my hand. It's only been a minute. Um, typically, if it's going to spill, it's going to spill right from the 
Yeah, go. Yeah. Not detected anything. And the other thing I can do on this too, I didn't notice any spillage there coming out of the hot water tank, but I can also take a drag read. Okay, this is going to be a good way to do that if you have just the 80 plus furnace there, then it on its own. Again, I'm still only at the two minute mark, so. This 80 plus furnace would just vent it by itself and wasn't tied in with this water heater. There'd just be one straight path to the outside. So if it wasn't drafting properly and everything there and stuff, you would know that they're from your draft room. Plus, taking a draft room is also a good diagnostic tool. It's just not a requirement right now as far as the SWS goes. If I was a heating contractor or heating technician, I'd definitely want to take a draft reading on every appliance on that. I'd also want to do it as a, uh, you know, the inspector in the TCI. I'd like to know how well that appliance is actually drafting. I still got a couple minutes here. I'm just going to stick my draft probe in here real quick. I'm getting like a negative 3.5, 3.6 on this. So, I mean, that's showing me that that's drafting pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and wait until I get closer to the five minute mark. Again, we got draft at the furnace, not showing any type of spillage or anything on the mirror there at the hot water tank. really close here to the five minute mark. I'm going to go ahead and get a reading. Yeah, I'm getting a negative 4.4 .4 on there for draft reading. Okay. So that's telling me that thing's drafting pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and stick my analyzer probe in here to get a combustion analysis reading on this. And as far as this water heater goes there and everything, um, basically I was allowed 200 parts per million air free on the um, CO reading on this furnace here. Things I'm right at the five minute mark. My air free reading here is 299, okay, on that. Um, scroll back up here, I'll show you what the regular CO reading is. It's 190, okay, on that. That's CO as measured. So you can see the difference on that. Like I say, if you're doing CO as measured, please mark that on the form so that people will know that. I don't believe the state is going to require the crew to do the combustion analysis on each unit, but it's definitely going to be required for the energy auditors and PCIs and heat temps. So. With that being said, I'm going to turn off this furnace. Alright, um, I'm going to 
pull up the form here and talk to you guys online about this as well. This is just kind of walking you through so you get a basic understanding how this form is going to work with you. It's pretty easy, just like the original form. If you have guys actually follow the form, it's telling you exactly what to do. So, with that being said, this is going to complete our test.